Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear respected brothers and sisters, wherever you are. Welcome to another episode of the Holy Prophet of Islam, where we discuss some of the trials and tribulations that was faced by the Holy Prophet of Islam. Today, I would like to speak about a very important issue that the Holy Prophet of Islam, he himself, had spoken about his responsibility and his duty for being sent as a prophet to the people of the Arabian Peninsula. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam mentioned the following narration that وَمَا بُعَثُ إِلَّا لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ that I was sent to perfect humanity's ethics and morals. Hence, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, all throughout his history, all throughout his life, tried his best to perfect this attribute of morals and ethics in the inhabitants of the Arabian Peninsula and hereafter forward it as lessons to the whole inhabitants of the whole world. Is it not that the Holy Quran, when it comes to describe the Holy, Quran, the Holy Prophet of Islam, it says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That, O Prophet of Allah, we have not sent you but to be a source of mercy to the people of the world. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Holy Prophet of Islam, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ See, Rasulullah being a mercy to the whole world, being a source of mercy as described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he himself comes and says, وَمَا بُعِثْتُ إِلَّا Here, he comes and emphasizes on the fact that I have not been sent but to perfect. Perfect what? وَمَا بُعِثْتُ إِلَّا لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Which means that the Arabs, the Arabians living in that part and that location in the world did not have the slightest idea of makarim al-akhlaq. How would they have any idea of ethics and morals when they themselves, they did not have any mercy towards each other? A clan used to attack a clan. A tribe used to attack a tribe. They used to, as we mentioned in the previous episode, they used to bury their own children alive. One of them used to go away for months and after months or years when he used to come back he used to find out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of a relationship had given him a daughter when he used to find out that this child is a female they used to take their hands come out in the deserts in the outskirts of Mecca, and they used to dig in these little girls. They didn't know, unknowing what will happen to them, they used to dig and help the father or the relatives digging the earth, not knowing that they are going to be, in moments to come, going to be buried in these ditches and in these graves alive. As stated by some of the companions of the Holy Prophet of Islam, that we, in the pre-Islamic era, used to practice these kind of activities. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Holy Prophet of Islam to prophethood so he can teach them, educate them. يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
instructed the Holy Prophet of Islam to first nourish them in terms of intellect, in terms of behavior, in terms of ethics and morals. And then when they were internally ready to receive these teachings, these verses of the Holy Quran, then Rasulullah was ready to give it to them and teach them. At a time where the Arabs were rotating and circumambulating around the holy house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, stark naked, without any covering, without any shroud, without any clothing. Why? They were under the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and brought us to this world in that manner. And the fact that we are covered with clothing is going to be a barrier between us and between our creator. So they thought that let's take off our clothing. So they were in line to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, through worshipping him, they were disobeying him. This was the extent of the ignorance of such individuals at the time of the Holy Prophet of Islam. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam lived amongst them in a manner that they themselves, his enemies, those who did not believe in his prophethood, they described him as As-Sadiq Al-Ameen, the most truthful and the most trustworthy individual. Let me narrate you a story. At one time, the flood came and covered the city of Mecca, resulting in the Holy Kaaba being destructed. They rebuilt the Holy Kaaba, but then the, tri the tribes and the clans of Quraysh, they came to argue between themselves who was going to carry the black stone, Al-Hajar Al-Aswad, and place it back in its location. They agreed that the first person to enter upon us from a specific door, from a specific angle of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is going to decide who is going to place this black stone in its position. And who better than the Holy Prophet of Islam to enter upon them. And this is way before he being sent to prophethood. He was known to be a Sadiq al Amin. Whatever you judge, whatever you decide, O Prophet of Allah, we will obey and listen to you. Of course, the title of Prophet of Allah is from me. They did not believe at that time that this individual is going to be sent in near future as a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Holy Prophet of Islam came. He took off his cloak. He placed the cloak on the ground. And he told them, place the black stone in the middle of this cloak. And each clan and a group of your young men, let them come and carry and hold on to one corner of this cloak. This way, he was able to convince these individuals that they all are going to participate and position the holy black stone in its position, in its place. They all carried the cloak. The argument stopped. And the Holy Prophet of Islam came and took the holy black stone and placed it in the Rukn al-Yamani. Or in the angle allocated for the black stone. Here... Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was able through this wisdom to direct these individuals through the right path. And these individuals, they saw the nobility, they noticed and they lived the blessing of the presence of the Holy Prophet of Islam amongst them. But then soon after, when he came to announce his prophethood, then 
they came to sh start showing their animosity towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Hence, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam started propagating for the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, started showing people the right path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, he was well equipped and he was ready to face any tests, any trials, and any tribulations from Quraysh and from the Arabs. He was a Sadiq al Amin, but they still showed him animosity. They still were not able to see that this individual is going to lead them, is going to be as if a ruler or a powerful leader upon them. He's going to direct them. Arabs, they couldn't comprehend and understand the fact that this noble individual, he is not here to control the way you live. He is here to educate you, to teach you, to make your living standards better. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam faced so much difficulties in his life to an extent that he used to come in the darkness of the night, stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray for the success of his ummah. They wanted the worst. They wanted everything bad for the Holy Prophet. They wanted to annihilate the Holy Prophet. Not only the Holy Prophet of Islam, but as we stated in the previous episodes, anyone that had any kind of relationship or friendship or connection with the Holy Prophet of Islam, he was also affected by this. His uncle Abu Talib, his cousins Ali ibn Abi Talib, the sons of Abu Talib, all, Bani Hashim. The lady, Halima as saadiyya she also, the one that breastfed the Holy Prophet of Islam, she also was affected by this relationship she had with the Prophet of Islam. But Rasulullah's goal, the Holy Prophet's responsibility on the face of this earth was to educate mankind. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ was faced by individuals like the scene you see behind me, individuals carrying stones and rocks and directing them and throwing them to the body of this individual whose presence was a source of mercy. He wanted to educate them. He wanted to teach them. He wanted to take them out of, uh, of darkness and ignorance. But they wanted to destroy him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, when he came, he brought some teachings. He came and told them, I am going to take away and abolish racism, freedom of life. One of the things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam came and abolished as a result of what they were practicing amongst them was the fact that they did not respect the beliefs of other individuals. And inshallah, in the next episodes, we will come to explain and speak about the different aspects of the Arabian's life that the Holy Prophet of Islam came and changed for the better. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us to understand the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam and hence practicing his teachings in our daily lives amongst our friends and families. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we receive the intercession of the Holy Prophet in the hereafter. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin 
وآله الطيبين الطاهرين